Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone, and thank you all so much for joining us on another episode of Coffee and Cryptos. I'm Ryan, and today I'm drinking a ginger tea latte. As always, if you're curious on how to make your own ginger tea latte, be sure to check out Dominique's video titled Cozy Fall Drink Recipes, which will be linked in the description below. So for today's video, we have quite the crypto news lineup. Let's get started. Story number one, Ledger launches a new hardware wallet. Crypto wallet maker Ledger has partnered with Tony Fidel, the well-known creator of Apple's iPod and the co-founder and former CEO of thermostat company Nest to create its Ledger Stacks hardware wallet. Now with the Stacks, Ledger was hoping to develop a more stylish and functional device than the previous Nano S, which looks more like a USB thumb drive and one that can win mass adoption by crypto users, according to the CEO of Ledger, Pascal Gauthier. We wanted to do something that is more fun and fits where the culture is going, said Ian Rogers, Ledger's chief experience officer, in an interview with Coindesk. Now, the wallet is a credit card sized device with embedded magnets so that multiple devices can easily be stacked. The outside is a wraparound electronic ink display that can show transaction details and even NFTs. The Ledger Stacks will retail for $279 compared to just $79 for the Nano S Plus and $149 for the Nano X wallet. It's a great time that Ledger has chosen to launch a new hardware wallet as interest in self-custody appears to be picking up following the collapse and asset freeze of centralized crypto exchange FTX and other crypto firms, which I've covered in my previous videos. Ledger said November 14th, three days after FTX filed for bankruptcy, was its best sales day ever for its devices, while the previous day was its second best sales day ever, and November was its best sales month in general. Ledger has said that it has sold over 5 million hardware wallets in 200 countries since the company was founded in Paris in 2014. The Ledger stacks will be available in the first quarter of 2023, with pre-ordering available on ledger.com right now. It uses secure USB-C to connect to the Ledger Live app on a laptop and Bluetooth to connect to the mobile app on a smartphone. It will also utilize the upcoming wallet extension Ledger Connect to connect to Web3 applications. Story number two, three prominent crypto millionaires die within a few weeks of each other. Recently, the internet can't stop talking about the deaths of three cryptocurrency giants that have been reported in the media weeks apart from each other. The mysterious deaths of crypto investors Nikolai Mushigin, 29, Tian Tian Kullender, 30, and Vyacheslav Tehran, 53, have drawn a lot of internet attention, and I apologize if I've mispronounced any of their names. Russian crypto typhoon Vyacheslav Tehran was the latest to die after his helicopter crashed near the French-Italian border. The Russian embassy confirmed his death on November 28th, according to TASS, a Russian news agency. Now, Tehran was responsible for the rise and fall of Forex Club, which was stripped of its license in Russia in 2018 for allegedly ripping off investors, according to Life, a pro-Kremlin Russian media outlet. His death made many on Twitter conjure up theories since it followed right after the deaths of Nikolai Mushigin and Tian Tian Kullender. Now, Tian Tian reportedly died in his sleep at the age of just 30 years old. He was the co-founder of Singapore's crypto trading firm called Amber Group. The firm confirmed his death on November 25th via its website. His death uh, came as a surprise as Amber Group had recently just became uh, valued at a $3 billion valuation. Still, the company faced some scrutiny after cutting about 10% of its staff. At the time, Cullender reportedly told Bloomberg that the cuts were needed for adjustments in, quote, global headcount every quarter. Now, with no records reported of Cullender's health before his death, Media outlets compared his demise to that of co-founder of crypto lending platform MakerDAO, Nikolai Mushigin. Mushigin's death gained press after his last tweets raised eyebrows on social media. On October 28th, he tweeted that there were government entities after him. Several hours later, he was found dead after drowning at a beach in Puerto Rico. Story number three. Goldman Sachs is looking to potentially buy some failed cryptocurrency exchanges. One of the world's largest investment banks is looking to spend tens of millions of dollars on crypto firms whose valuations have been hit hard after the implosion of FTX, according to a report by Reuters on Tuesday. Quote, we do see some really interesting opportunities priced much more sensibly, 
said Matthew McDermott, Goldman's head of digital assets. Goldman sees an increased need for trustworthy players in the industry, which the bank sees as an opportunity. He didn't mention which crypto firms are on the bank's radar, but he said it's currently conducting due diligence to evaluate the potential of various companies. Now, Goldman Sachs has already funneled $690 million in crypto and blockchain-based companies, including Surtech, Coinmetrics, Blockdaemon, Elwood, and Anchorage Digital. It also plans to build its own blockchain, according to McDermott. The investment bank set up a crypto trading desk in 2021 at a time when major institutions embraced adoption of digital assets. FTX's rapid descent boosted Goldman's trading volumes as investors looked for trustworthy counterparts. It turns out that major companies are not put off by the industry's woes and are, in fact, snapping up the chance to seize opportunities while investor sentiment is low. And BlackRock CEO Larry Fink recently said that he still sees the power of cryptocurrency's underlying technology, despite the investment company losing millions of dollars from its investment in FTX. Chow Chang Shoreland, co-founder of blockchain software provider ShelterZoom, told BlockWorks that Goldman's move suggests that it will see enormous potential for financial profit and the expansion of its business. Banks can start a whole new era in both crypto and blockchain as a whole, he said, adding it will no longer need to be such an expensive undertaking and investors will have ample opportunity to find companies that are delivering a working product at a much more reasonable cost. Still, Chang Shoreland says that banks owning crypto companies may undercut one of the major selling points of the cryptocurrency space, which is decentralization. Because let's face it, the bottom line is that big banks probably are not going to care about crypto being decentralized. Their goal is to integrate it into the existing financial system, which some would argue is already broken. Well, that's all for this one, guys. I hope you learned something new today. As always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Follow us on Instagram at Coffee and Cryptos, and I'll catch you on the next one. See you around.